look welcome. like to introduce to you our pastor Sandra who will be giving us a song and um, right after her it will be overseer David Petway. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, we are so thankful for everything that you're doing right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that your people are, Lord, fed. Fed, Lord, even spiritually. 
fed physically, fed with the word of God. And we're just so thankful to you this morning. We're thanking that you kept us throughout these holidays. That you caused us to glorify your name as never before. And God, we want to honor you this morning. We want to honor you not only with our presence, but with our heart. God, you are so worthy of all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Father, we want to say we love you this morning. Yes, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, it's the last Sunday of 2020. And it has been a tumultuous year for some. It has been an earth-shaking year for us. We're thanking you for your grace right now that we stand in the house of God and we stand on an open heaven right now. That your very presence and anointing is in this place. And we thank you for everything you're doing right now through your people to make your name great. Not only in this place and among those who are in the airwaves right now, but even all across the world, God. People are paying homage to the living God. And we say we glorify your name not only with our presence, but with our mouths and with our tongues and with our actions and reactions, God. And we say right now this word will cause right now hearts to be mended. It will cause right now sicknesses to dissipate and disappear. It will cause depression to be broken and destroyed. And we're giving you glory. We ask you to use this vessel of God as you've never used him before. And Lord, that the love of God will come forth and we praise you for everything you're doing. And we lose the power of the living God, the authority of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today, we're going to be talking about 3D power. Somebody said 3D power. 3D power. When we talk about 3D power, we are talking about three dimensions of power as we look at the very heavens and everything that pertains to 3D power. Uh, a three-dimensional space is a geometric space in which three values are required to determine the position of an element. A lot of Christianity today is operating in two dimension, which is not really Christianity. It is an absence of the power and authority of God. When you think of three dimensions, the bo a box is three dimensional. It contains height and width and depth. Movies shot in 3D are usually shot with two cameras placed about the eyesight away from each other, one eye and then another eye, in order to get the 3D. So that's why you have right now the uh, 3D movies, you have to have special glasses. There are also three dimensions of the heavens. The first heavenly dimension uh, is the habitat of man. It is the heaven you can see with your natural eyes. It contains the sun, moon, and stars, and the atmosphere which encircles the earth. There are three dimensions of measurement even in the earth. And they are, of course, the ones we mentioned, the height, the width, and the depth. At the height, the width, and the depth of when we're talking about uh, the measurement. 
all architecture, uh, architecture, well, y'all help me, architectural, all architectural <laughs> designs and mathematical formulas in the earth are limited to these three dimensions. Then we have the three dimensions of man. Now, somebody say, God loves three. Yeah. He loves threes. And then uh, you know the three of them at the Godhead. God the what? Father. God the what? And God the what? God loves threes. Amen? Amen. 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 So the three dimensions of man is what? Body, soul, and what? Spirit. Spirit. Okay? Your body operates that can never be saved. It's dead to the spirit. No use trying to sanctify this body because the body going to return to dirt where it, became, where it came from. Amen. The soul consists of what? Man, y'all learning. God. God. <laughs> Mind, will, and emotions. Amen. And Romans 2 and 12, 12 and 2 tells us not to be conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that what? Good, acceptable. Okay. So the mind, but the soul must be transformed so that you and I won't be so emotional. If we are transformed is by the word of God and the word of God causes us to walk in the authority of God even when all hell is breaking loose right. and circumstances that we can't understand. Amen. That we learn to trust God because he's a God of his, of his word. You notice how sometimes God will, uh, well all the time he delivers us, but the same thing that happened last year can come around this year yeah. and you will be just as frustrated if you hadn't learned faith from last year. Amen? Amen. The same circumstance, because the enemy does not give up on you. And sometimes God is giving you a break. If you don't pass the test, all God is doing is giving you a break until you pass the test. Amen? You know how it is in school. You 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 don't pass the test, and you end up you know flunking. You end up uh, repeating grades when you don't pass the test. And so Pastor Petway knows uh, specifically about that because he, he flunked twice in elementary school. I thought it was some place just to go and have fun, but I found out I was still in. I was uh, some of the people that were two grades behind me caught up with me. And so uh, I had to learn by the time I got in the seventh grade that uh, you just can't play school. You got to really do your work. Amen. And so God blessed me where, you know, I went on and God just blessed me. I got a, a social degree, a bachelor's degree, Amen. master's degree, Amen. and it is to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. You know, when, when you do those things, you got to realize that there are some people who uh, really want you to stay down. You understand? They really want you to stay down. Um, and, 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 you know, I do tell a little bit, I'm transparent, but, uh, people from high school used to come back from, no, from elementary school. They would say, I was in the eighth grade and they said, I know somebody in high school. <laughs> they said, you were in the same grade they were. I said, they lied. <laughs> I said, he's lying. I don't even know them people. <laughs> even when they told me to write down your right age and when filling out those cards when you go to the next grade, I always lied. Two grades. I was two grades behind. Well, I was. I'm nearly 20 when I graded, graduated high school. <laughs> That's all right. That's but all you right. know, okay, if you mess up, you don't have to stay messy. You don't have to stay. And then you can rap and, and you know stuff like yeah, yeah, I don't know why I go all on these side trips, but I do. Uh with an Air Force and uh everybody in the Air Force I knew had at least a associate's degree or something when I went in the Air Force. I was enlisted and I didn't have a social degree. So I was always trying to fake like I was more educated than I was. I would say stuff like, this is the Constantinople of this country. <laughs> People would look at me 
people would look at me like, man, he's an idiot. And I thought they were really just, um, you know, just thinking that I was smart. But everybody knew I was messed up and but me, I was trying to prove stuff to people. I said, look at the redness of that ketchup. It makes the heart of, of, of a papa food great. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know what the words meant, but I said, because I wanted to be impressive. Wow. And so, what, what? Now I hardly ever use big words. You know what? Because when you got it, you don't have to prove. Yeah, right. 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 You know, Michael Jordan. I've never heard him bragging a lot. Nope. Didn't hear. Don't hear great people. Jim Brown. All these folks. I don't hear them bragging a lot. Because they know they got it. And sometimes we as Christians need to just cool out. Amen. You can have a you can have a walk like you know everything. You know that's a saying. They didn't know you was a fool until you opened your mouth. That's true. <laughs> you can walk around like you're the smartest person in the world. Don't know nothing. Don't have anything. But you open your mouth and that go. That there it is. People talking about but anyway. So the third dimension of man is the spirit. And the spirit of man is what a small is. And the spirit of man is the spirit that has failed. The spirit that belong, that has uh, an inheritance from Adam. That what God's word said in Romans 3, 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So that's the three dimensions of man. So say 3D power. 3D power. So we, we need to operate in 3D power, but that's in concerning the first dimension and the first heaven. But then there's the second heavenly dimension. And the second heaven is where Satan rules his evil empire with legions of demons and fallen angels. Mm -hmm. Demons have power. Mm -hmm. They have personality. They have purpose. Satan has come to rob, to kill, and destroy. We know Romans 10, I mean John 10 and 10. The thief coming not but the what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? Amen? So if he can mislead you down a wrong path that will destroy your life purpose, he has won the battle. The second heaven is his campground. So really Satan's job is to tempt you with what you like. Amen? Amen. Now, now, you know certain things you don't like. You know, you 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 don't you, you know you, he ain't gonna send it to you, okay. but he gonna send you what you like or whatever. Yes. Mm -hmm. He gonna send you the right guy, the right girl. He gonna send you what you really like. He gonna send you the temptation that you can't resist. But you've got to know that you're not based in the second heaven, and he has no authority over you. Amen. Amen. So Satan is a fallen angel who quotes scripture to deceive and destroy the righteous. Who did he try to destroy to it? Well, even Jesus. When Jesus got anointed to go for, Jesus spent 30 years being a good son. I mean, just the best son ever. And he was the son of God, but he was the son of Mary and Joseph. Amen. And then after he spent all these 30 years of doing that, then a God son anoints him. And he anoints him mightily. He anoints him so much that he come down from heaven. He sends a, a dove down to highlight on him the Holy Spirit. And then he tells the a whole group, John the Baptist and the people that baptized him, this is my beloved son and who I'm well pleased. And he's got all these accolades and Jesus is thinking, it's time to go. And the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness. For 40 days of fasting. Wow. And I'm sure he prayed. Because when you fast for real, you're going to pray. Yes, Amen. We're going to fast. January. Amen. Yeah, dead, dead, dead. We're going to fast. Amen. And, and, and after that, the, the devil tempts him in three areas. The only three areas of temptation categorically in their ears. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And he tempts him in those areas because if he can tempt Jesus in any one of those areas, that means that you and I won't have victory in any one of those areas. So we're saying that you have to watch his power. 
This Bible establishes that Satan is the God of this world. God of this world. The prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2 and 2. Satan, as the ruler of the air, attempts to rule from the second heaven, heaven to illegally legislate the first heaven. So what heaven are we in, you all? The first heaven. We're in the first heaven, okay? I'm talking about the natural man. Amen. We're in the first heaven in the natural man. So what Satan does, he tries to illegally legislate from the second heaven in order to disturb your peace, your joy, and everything that pertains to you. His job is to make your life frustrated. To make you feel like you can't make it. To make you give up. To make you feel like this thing has no end that you're in. And so when we look at it, uh, the uh, establishing that and this place called earth is where we physically are again. Where God and Satan are concerned, the issue has never been power, including the, uh, the earth. Because God is all powerful. Uh, the earth is the Lord. Psalm 24 and 1 said, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. So, you, you've always heard us say that Satan is the God of this world. I want you to hear this now. Is the God of this world. But if Satan is the God of this world, and yet the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, there must be some confusion because that is a contradiction. Let me tell you something. When, when Jesus went to the cross and died, it didn't, he didn't take away any of Satan's power. When he rose from the dead, he didn't take any of Satan's power. Satan is just as powerful now as he ever walked. Mm -hmm. So what happened, Pastor? He took away his authority. Come on now. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. And when we read in the opening scripture about Jesus giving us authority over serpents and yes. scorpions, over yes. all the power of the enemy, we that means that Jesus gave us authority back. Yes. So when we're talking about him illegally operating the earth, he can only operate in those that don't know who they are Come on. and yeah. refuse to operate in the authority that he's given. Yes. Yes. Say it again. Satan has no, no authority. Satan, Satan has, has no authority. authority. But he does have power. But he does have power. I have I have power, power and authority. And authority. <laughs> I Hallelujah. I have power and authority. Yes. So when we look at all the things that happen, and I've got power and authority, the thing is that the enemy has to operate out of deception. He has to have get me frustrated, get me off focus. Have caused me to be deceived in order for me to operate in defeat in my life. Because if I had him, if I hit him with his with authority, he has to really back off. What is authority? Power. Let's discuss power. Let's give an illustration of power. I'm a I'm a in the army. I'm back here in one tank. I have a hundred tanks coming at me at the same time. A hundred. And they are 50 miles away. But they're coming. And I know they're coming. If I operate in power, who's going to win? The tanks. The tanks. The 50 tanks are going to win. But if I operate in authority, I've got a radio or a telephone. Come on. And I call in for an airstrike. My God. hundred of them coming. Send one of F-15, F-16 with loaded rockets. Amen. Loaded, <laughs> loaded rockets. And when I have them come in, they're coming in and they got all these missiles. And before the tanks can get 40 miles in, they all destroyed. Yes. Because yes. I'm operating in authority. Mm -hmm. all right. But suppose I had the radio and I didn't know what to call or uh, who to call. 
And I got so afraid that I didn't call who was I was supposed to call. Mm. Then that wouldn't be operating authority. That would be operating in fear. Yes. Yes. Do you know most saints, a lot of saints are operating in yes. the spirit of fear? Yes. And even with this coronavirus, it isn't the coronavirus that's killing them. It's the spirit of fear. Amen. Even with, when it comes to symptoms of the thing. Amen. So what I'm telling you this is that we've got to operate at a new authority now. That every time I get a cough, I ain't saying, oh. <laughs> Some people just decree it over themselves. Oh, I, I wonder if I got cover on the mind. You know, talking about I'm, I'm heating up. I got the temp, but you're, you're the, 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 you know, you got ninety degrees in the house. That's why you got temp. <laughs> we gotta get this thing right. We gotta get it right. Not everything is is, is that. We we got to not put my mouth fear. We, we got to know who we are and everything. Right, yeah, God. Amen. Move into a house and it start creaking and you going up there talking about, oh, I believe it's hates in here. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. You're going to start believing the hates in there. And you're going to be some hates whether you think it or not. Oh, boy. My God. Take a The thing about us, though, we ain't running into the attic to see <laughs> what's up there. <laughs> <laughs> We ain't, we ain't, and I said, ain't, we ain't running up into the attic to see that. Oh, no good. Glory, hallelujah, man. When it comes to Satan, again, we mentioned he must. Tempt you in three areas. First John two sixteen, and that his God's word says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So when he's tempting us with different things, you know what's not good for you. You know that when Sister Sally called you on that telephone and on the gossip. You know it's not good for you because you know your flesh. Your flesh gonna want to hear what's happening. Did you hear? It? And you go what? And you know it's wrong. You know that that's so sad and bad mess. But you gonna you gonna just pick up the phone and just listen to all that mess. Yeah. And oh man, let me tell you what happened. Pastor Petway was. Downtown drinking, he was drunk as a skunk. He was so drunk he couldn't even know his right from his left foot. He tripped up by twelve times, and I saw. Him. Then I come up here, and I just stumble. Oh and you go, that, that's him. Oh my God, <laughs> that's that's that's. Oh my God, Pastor, drinking like that. God knows he don't need to be running the church drinking like that. He probably doing dope too. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, just explode. You know what gets you? If gossip gets you, stick it out the gossip cycle. You know, whatever it is, get out of the gospel cycle. Gossip cycle. You know, get out of it. So, when it comes to third heaven. The third heaven in scripture is where God Almighty rules and reigns over the universe with his holy angels. This is where the righteous receive their crowns of life after hearing the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. This is what I am concerned about. How many of us, when we get to Throne of God. How many of us will hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant? How many of us will hear and see, I have this for you to do, and I had that for you to do, but you didn't do, some of us will hear, you didn't do anything. 
everything that I told you to do. Some of us will have a recording of the dreams that he gave you that you didn't even attempt to fulfill or attempt to fulfill. And when God rolls back that film, you're going to be giving all kind of excuses. And you won't hear that those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear those words. That's why we work so hard and diligently to make sure we under the auspices of God that we do whether we're tired or not. We do everything that we can to glorify God. How many dreams right now that we have in this room right now? Or on Zoom, Facebook Live. How many dreams do we have that are yet to be realized? Because we are doing everything except what God told us to do. It's time to go forward and to move forward even in God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 2, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knows such one caught up to the third heaven. The reason we know it's a second and a first heaven is that Paul spoke of a third heaven. Let's look at the three dimensions of God's reach. The three dimensions of God's reach. They are his omnipresence, which God being everywhere at the same time. You know, God knows where you are, but he also knows what, where you're going. He knew it before the foundation of the earth. And what God is saying, I've already prepared a way for you and a place for you. Now all you have to do is seek me and find me and I will show you what needs to be done. There are some great people in this room right now. There's some great people who have great things on the inside of them. And God is saying, when are you going to allow me to use you the way that I want to, rather than the way that you want to. You know what will happen if we do it right? Mm. We'll start seeing things come together in our homes, wow. in our families. We'll start seeing things break loose, even in our bodies, in our mind, in our soul, our spirit. There is, of course, the process that we have to go through because I hate to say this, but the greater the anointing on your life, the greater things that you will have to go through. Let me use the word process. The greater process you will have to go through. Some things myself and Pastor Sandra used to go through, we thought we'd never get through. Jesus. We thought they were too tough. But the reason we went through is because we love God. Now God uses every one of those things in order to bless someone else. So whatever you're going through, what, I want you all to complete the sentence. Your area of greatest struggle is your area of greatest what? Man, y'all catching on. Your area of greatest struggle is your area of greatest anointing. If you're struggling with healing and, and being healed, that means that there's a healer on the inside of you. That the second heaven does not want to come out. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to come out. Because if it come out, you're going to crush it. You're going to be walking in 3D power. People going to want to be taking a photograph. Ha! Huh. Okay. <laughs> no, where they came from. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> There's also God's omniscience. So his omnipresence, he's everywhere at the same time. But his omniscient, he knows everything. 
You know, sometimes people will come up with things like, things like, I know what you're going through. Mm. They don't have an idea. But God does. He knows everything you're going through. As a matter of fact, he's so omniscient, he knows everything you're thinking right now. Mm -hmm. Even if you're thinking bad about the overseer right now, he knows it. <laughs> he knows it right now. Glory, hallelujah. Um, you know, um, one of the things that when I, I'm just going to be honest, when I was in church and going through some real boring messages and sometimes <laughs> snoring through them and all that things, you know, <laughs> sometimes I just wonder, when he going to stop? <laughs> when he going to quit? And, and you know, when I started church, when I was in church, they always had the pot going at home while they were at church. So at a certain time, they had to leave because the greens were going to burn up or the meat was going to burn up. So they had to leave at a certain time. And the thing is that when it comes to what we're talking about and we're talking about the omniscience of God or the un um, the knowingness of God that he knows everything mm -hmm. he knows the argument that happened before you got to church mm -hmm. and you know some saints are famous for that mm -hmm. all, the, all the way to church then get in church praise the Lord <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's some, it's, you know some people are good at the thing about you know you know when you're fussing at your children Amen. hey y'all get in that room and don't you ever get on the phone ring. Hello. Our <laughs> 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 children stop looking at your parents. Stop looking at your parents right now. <laughs> and the funny thing is, you'll be doing it too, wouldn't you? You'll be doing the same thing too, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and then the third dimension of God's outreach or his reach is his omnipotence. Yeah. That God is all powerful. Yes, he is. Yes. He that is. he's able to change any situation that you're facing right now. Thank you. He's able to change it. But what we've got to do is operate in what I call 3D. Power. Yes, yes. One of our people said earlier, I said, where are we? Where, where, where do we live? And, and, and they said the third heaven. It, it, it is where we are positioned right now. Yes, that's good. It is. That's it right. is. And it's, it's right, but they said, uh, but it getting ahead of my message, and I didn't quite want it right then. So, <laughs> when it comes <laughs> we're talking about when God's three dimensions of reach, it is, it is his unlimited supernatural dimension. Yes. It is a dimension that's greater than my dimension on earth because on earth, all I see is limit. And I, I want to tell you this. If you're operating in the first heaven or allowing the second heaven, to operate on you, then heaven will not be your home. Amen. Amen. It will not be your home because you're operating in the natural and then you're letting the demonic mm -hmm. take a hold of you. And what we like to say and what I like to say is make sure heaven is your home. Amen. Make sure you've given your life to Christ for real. Let's look at not only the three dimensions of God's reach, but the three dimensions of God's grace. God manifests his grace by giving his son. You all know the scripture, John 3, 16, for God so what? Love the world. That he what? Yeah, that whosoever what? Shall not what? Perish. But have what? Everlasting life. Man, y'all good. I'm telling you, I'm going to have to get better. Okay. I'm <laughs> good. So, so when we're talking about that, uh, his son, uh, 
giving uh, God giving his son grace is not a thing it is a person mm -hmm. that has extended that to us that we depend on in order for us to know that all our sins are forgiven and we are to walk in this grace in our everyday life without this grace we would be totally helpless because none of us could take away the sin that was in our lives. Number two, his son manifests the father's grace by being touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Uh, Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. Now, when you're going through hard, you need these to this scripture right here. Yes. You need this says when you're going through hard and you just can't figure out how I can, and nobody really understands what you're going through. You need this scripture right here. Uh, Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. It says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You need to know that Jesus knows where you are, where you can come boldly to God and say, this is not mine. Mm -hmm. Whatever this is that the enemy has encapsulated, you need to be able to come boldly to God and say, wait just a minute, this don't belong to me. Amen. Poverty doesn't belong to me. Yeah. Sickness doesn't belong to me. It doesn't mean you won't go through. But God's word says, how many weapons formed against you won't prosper? No, no. no weapon, not one will prosper. And you know God's word, and so you come boldly to God because this is not you. Yes, yes. This, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, my wife and I used to go on vacations, and man, we used to have to just struggle. I mean, just it was a struggle to, 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 to have any extra money to do anything. I mean, and used to, you know, find the little uh, resort things that gave you a free trip if you went on the, you know, the resort trip and all that. And we, we've really been focusing on being a child of God and operating in 3D power and un un understanding that we operate on an open heaven. And man, we didn't have to try that. We didn't have to go on no tours. We didn't, we, we ate wherever we wanted to. Nice. First time in 20 some years, we've just been able to just do what we wanted to do. Nice. 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 But we have been claiming the promises of God. We had a, 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 a trip scheduled for last year sometime. And I says, well, you know, we, shoot, we ain't going. If we, we, we ain't broke, we ain't going. I said, no, I'm tired of going to folk, but going places, and you can't, you can't shop, you can't, get, you can't do nothing. I said, I'm tired of that. And God turned that around. I mean, God turned it around within months or whatever to to His glory. He turned it around in months or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all about the kingdom, and we love the kingdom. We've invested heavily in the kingdom, but I want you to know that, we, now, listen here, we are the kingdom people with kingdom blessing. We didn't use y'all money either. Right? Come on, now. Didn't use y'all money. Well, oh, no, didn't, didn't have to use your money. It was money God gave us. So I, I'm telling you that my greatest desire is to see you all blessed. Every time I have a dream, if I, I, I have about a house, I want to see the saints of God. Amen. I, I want to see fresh anointing. Everything time, I want to see you with the house. Yes. I want to see you with the car. I want to see you debt free. I want to see you blessed and overflowing with the blessings of God. I want your marriages happy, and I want your relationship happy, and I want your children home, and I want uh, you know, and I'm just praying to God. For the overflow blessings of God And people are moving out right now God is opening doors right now It's not just with us But God is opening doors right now Why? Because you're stepping out I see some of you stepping out And you don't even know where the next blessing is coming from But you're stepping out You're saying God you're going to do this It's not on me It's on you to do this 
Yes, God. My, my, my. We had people going out to the community yesterday and, yes. and, and uh, really clothing the, home, the, the homeless. Man, that's God. Yes. yes. They tell me they didn't even have to move. They came just running. <laughs> just <laughs> Somebody said, like a flood. They came running. It was a blessing to give. Yes. And too many times in our churches, we're just saying, give me, give me. But we need to give to somebody else. Yes. Give to somebody else right now. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. And it did pleasure because the pastors weren't even here. Yes. Thank you, Lord. They didn't know the pastors weren't here. A oh, man is an army to themselves. Yes. That's right. Glory. Good to have just good people that you can depend on. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yes. And that is grace. And when we extend that grace, God extends it to us. And then the Son manifests grace, the third dimension of grace, is that the Son manifests grace by dying for our sin and redeeming us from the curse of the law. Romans 5 and 8. It tells us, but God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Man, I used to be hard on the sinner until I found out I wasn't that right either. <laughs> found out there's some things in my heart that God needed to work on. And when I did, you know how it increased my repentance. I thought not repenting every time I thought I did something wrong. I did something wrong. I thought when I thought I did something wrong. Just repenting of my motives and my heart. And we've got to do heart repentance, you all. I'm talking about real repentance when it comes to God. We've got to repent when we think wrong. When we look at the wrong thing. We've got to repent, you all. When we talk about one another yes, Lord. in a wrong way, we're a church that laughs. We have fun. But we should never laugh at anyone. We should laugh with each other. Amen. One of my members continually reminds me of coming in here with that vest on. <laughs> I'm not going to man, with a vest on with my coat. <laughs> but I know that She's laughing with me by that. <laughs> I know she is. I, I'm telling you she is. I, I know. I have faith that she is right now in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, laugh with me. We, we love to have fun. Not, nothing like our Wednesday Bible studies there on uh, Tuesday Bible studies on Zoom. We have so much fun. Yeah. We just laugh and we, we, we are doing the word, but we are laughing too. And it's such a blessed thing. If you can't laugh, you got to learn how to laugh. Look at somebody and just laugh. <laughs> Look at somebody and laugh. Look at another person and just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to laugh right now. You got to have joy. That's what life is all about. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Let's discuss this 3D power that I'm talking about. 3D power is the ability to realize that you are part of the kingdom culture called heaven. Somebody say kingdom culture. Kingdom culture. The three components of a kingdom is a king his territory and his service. Yes. Now, you notice that I said a territory mm -hmm. is a key, his territory and his service. The three components of the kingdom of God is a key. God the Father, God the Son, and who else? The Holy God the Holy Spirit. It is a king, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is his territory, which is the world or the cosmos. It means everything that's made and created and his servants. Now his servants are not everyone. His servants are the righteous. Mm. So you can be in the world, yes, yes, yes. but you're not a part of the kingdom of God. 
So 3D power is our ability to operate in the third heaven while being positioned in the earth. Mm -hmm. So I'm operating from the third heaven, yes. but I'm positioned in the earth. Mm -hmm. I'm operating in the third heaven, oh. but my feet are on the earth. Amen? Amen. So the three benefits of the kingdom, kingdom, Romans 14 and 17. It says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. What is the kingdom? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, when I say the benefits, first of all, righteousness can only be gained by becoming a son of a daughter of God. Mm -hmm. People think righteousness is doing right. Mm -hmm. But even people that are unsaved can do right. But they cannot do it on a continual basis. When we're th talking about righteousness, it means right standing. All right. I stood with the devil. Now I stand with God. Yes, yes. Come on, y'all got it? I right. stood with who? The devil. Now I stand with who? God. So I'm righteous because of who he is. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a sinner saved by grace. Come on. Because when God saved me, he saved me from the sin nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that sometimes I don't sin and I don't I, I don't try, but sometimes I may sin, but I, I'm repentant against the God and I go. But I'm I'm righteous because of what God says in His Word. As one as by one man disobedience, many became sinners. Who was that? Adam. Adam. And so by the righteousness of one, many became righteous. Without the obedience of one, many became righteous. Who was that? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So if I was a sinner because I was disobedient and Adam was disobedient and it came to me and all of a sudden I became righteous because I accepted Jesus Christ and he is righteous, I cannot still be a sinner and be righteous at the same time. You understand? Amen. I am righteous because of who he is. Yes. But what righteousness does is it gives me the propensity not to want to sin, yes. not to desire sin, yes. to have power over sin, yes. and most of all have what? Authority over sin. So I have to choose to walk in sin if I'm going to do it. And and, and just because of our nature, you might uh, slip, you know, I'm just saying, you might slip up and cuss somebody out. Chip? I know about Chip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are a few cusses in here. Because I keep bringing it up. I know there's a few cusses yeah. in here. Yeah. <laughs> there are a few cusses in here. I, I know it is. It shouldn't be now, should be. But let me tell you what should happen. You should be really cutting out the cuss words. You should yes. be there. If you were 10 cuss words every minute uh, say two years ago, two years later you should be down to about one or two. Maybe none. Thank you. God took the cussing out of my mouth. I'm telling you what he took it out of my mouth. Really. I used to could cuss so I would confuse people. Yes. Yes. They would say, that ain't even a cuss word. I said, you yes, now. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm saying, if you can take all the cuss words out of my mouth, he can take them all out of your yes, mouth. Yeah. And what you need to do if you're around a cusser, you need to bind it. Now, you can't bind everybody. You're a child. Don't be doing that around your mama. Now. <laughs> if you got the right mama daddy, as a backhand to the mouth. <laughs> don't, don't do that around everybody. But I'm saying, just, just, just on your breath. And if you know how to speak in tongues, you know, and, and just under your breath where they can't hear you. Or you can rebuke, I buy that in the name of Jesus. Don't you like, and I'm telling you children, don't let it out now. Don't let it be sound. It's going to be soundproof when you do it. And if you're married to somebody, you know, don't, don't do all that. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Now don't do that. Just, just, just go. Your heavenly Father is the one that got to handle it now. Your heavenly Father the one got to handle it. So, so he don't need your help. Cause see, then it makes it a sin because you're doing it with the wrong motive. 
You want to let them know how righteous you are, how indignant you are. And when you do that, then the other person get all upset. And then what they do? They cuss some more. A lot more. They will not. <laughs> so. We gotta handle everything with the right heart. Yes, Lord. You know, if you turned it around and sort of said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, you said, God bless you. Come on, man. God bless you. Were you mad, Pastor? Yeah, God bless you. That means that God has taken over you, your, your own spirit. God bless you. Yes. And man, when you do that, you know. It, it puts heaps of fire and coal on yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Because you know what I believe? I believe with some marriages, God trying to get at that other person. Mm -hmm. God right there, he said, I'm going to get him now. Got that boy in there, we're ready to strike him. And here you go, get in the way. <laughs> you said that again. <laughs> you supposed to represent the Holy Spirit. Yes. You supposed to represent God. Yes, that's good. And you stepping all in the way of God. God said, Mom, I'm gonna hit them. I'm gonna hit them. Man, they better get out the way. And they're gonna get out the way. Get out the way of not only that, but everything, every relationship that you think ought to be a certain way. Get out the way. Let God handle it. Shoot, God get a hold of them. Shoot, man, they'll, they'll be running back or whatever. They'll be running back. So we need to know I was still there a little bit too long. Okay. So the righteousness part we understand. The righteousness is the righteousness of God. Now I'm righteous. I'm saved. And they used to say sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you Lord. But, but I'm righteous. Now the peace. What about this peace? That's a third part of the benefits of the kingdom. This peace is the peace that passes all understanding. The reason that you don't have to get them back is because you've got peace that they don't understand. Yes. You sitting back and they yes. just waffling off at the mouth. Yes, Lord. And you just got the peace to sell in. Right. And you just got peace that they don't even understand. And it makes them nervous. Right. When, they, when they start getting nervous, you know you got them on the run. You got peace right now. Even in the midst of loss, and people have, have suffered loss right now. But I'm telling you, in the midst of loss, God will give you the peace that passes understanding if you are healed. Yes. And that's what God wants us to have, the peace in the middle of the storm. Yes. Stop fussing, stop arguing, but then begin to lift your prayers up to God. Yes, Lord. So, And then the third part is joy. And let, let me tell you about joy. People think joy is happy. But it's not. It's not happiness because happiness is based on what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to watch Dwayne and Rerun and them buddies, boy, they used to be so fun. <laughs> they, they, man, them boy had all fun. They were just, but when the times were good, they were all high and happy. And when times weren't, they were all down in the ground. But the thing was, when joy is comes from God. God's word says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. If you are really walking in joy, you're going to have much strength. Mm -hmm. What takes away our strength is when we let the enemy take away our joy. God wants you to operate in such a joy that no matter what's happening, you're still joyful and peaceful. The, and I'm going to say this. Remember this. And this nobody can make you mad. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Repeat it again, y'all. Nobody can make me mad. Nobody, Nobody can make me mad. mad. Nobody can make me mad. I know there's somebody in your life that you think can make you mad. Yeah. But there's nobody can make you mad. You have to choose to be mad. Okay. You make a choice to be mad, okay? So when we look at it, uh, when we're talking about his right, Romans 10, 9, and 10, it tells us this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised us from the dead, you shall be saved. It said, but for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So that is the way that we're saved because people will accept Christ because of somebody else and they do it with their mouth but not with their heart. If you don't do it with your heart, then you're not really saved at that time. 
And that's why many people have come up to altars and said, I want to be saved. Raise your hand, I want to be saved. But they're doing it for somebody else and not necessarily for their relationship with God. Let's look at the prerequisites for operating in 3D power. You must be born again. Number one, you must read and study the word to be transformed. The problem we have in the house of God is that there are so many people that are still babes and they're 20 years in the Lord. They are 30 years in the Lord and they're still babes because they're not reading and studying the word of God. God's word says in Romans 10, 17, he says, so then faith coming by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? Word. The word of God. So you won't have faith unless you are studying and reading the word of God. More than just this preacher standing up or anyone else standing up here on Sunday morning, even on Tuesday. Why is faith so important? Hebrews 11, 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So we say, and say this, without faith, it is impossible to please God. The way you get faith is through the word of God. So when we're talking about people that don't ever read the Bible, you will be just as immature in God as you were when you first started. Because you're not doing anything in order to facilitate the word of God. And let me correct that. You will have a degree of maturity. But listen here. You are basing your walk with God on a man or a woman of God who's teaching the word. And you never learn God for yourself. You need and I need to learn God for ourselves. Number three, you must pray not only for you, but for others. Uh, Matthew 6 and 10, it says, Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. If you don't pray, you won't be able to get the blessings from heaven that you really desire. You won't be able to do it. And how do you get those blessings for more than yourself? God is a God of that of multiplicity so he wants you to be concerned about more than just yourself Amen. the way you get those is through, through not only prayer for yourself but through intercession you intercept you, you call out and you cry out for others and whenever you give because God's word says but God so loved the world whenever you begin to give to others whether it's finances or prayer, let me tell you what, God gives you a return because while you're praying for somebody else, child, God is dealing with yours. Amen. He's sending for some. While you're praying for someone else healing, he's healing you. you. You have got to understand, we've got to really begin to manifest this 3D power and operate in the kingdom of heaven versus operating in the earth. Let's look at operating in our inheritance, 3D power. Romans 8, 16 and 7, it says, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. Let me explain one thing. A person or a son or daughter never receives their inheritance until the testator dies or the one who gives the inheritance dies. Jesus has already died for you and I. And so it is time for us to receive what he's already done. The testator died for it. Now we're entitled to the inheritance. What is the inheritance? It says Ephesians 1 and 3. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with how many spiritual blessings? Wow. All spiritual blessings in heavenly, uh, in heavenly places, in Christ. So God has already blessed you. So let's say it. God has already blessed me. God has already blessed me. Say so once again, God has already blessed me. God has already blessed me. Now I want to see the manifestation. Now. Somebody said, now I want to see the manifestation. 
Yeah. One more time. Now, now I want to see the manifestation. Yeah. I want to see the manifestation of what God has already promised me. Amen. So, and he said, and I raised up together, us together, and made us sit together in heavenly places. So I leave you with one other, one other statement, and we're going to end. I leave this with, I've been saying that what God uh, spoke to my heart in June was that the dams are bursting. Amen. And I believe that the dams are bursting, yes, that the ref, the reservoir of resources that God has is bursting forth right now, but it's only to the legitimate and those that can operate in this three-dimensional power. When you have your foot on earth, but you're operating out of heaven, where you're saying, God, right now, I am a child of God, and I claim, lay claim to every inheritance that you've given me. And I lay claim to it, not just so that I can prosper, but I want to be a blessing to somebody else. I'm doing it out of a heart of love. I don't want to point out to all my naysayers and enemies how blessed I am and how blessed they're not. I want to do it because I want you glorified in every area of my life. I want to see the glory of God. And I'm no longer going to operate from the spirit of pity because pity don't belong to a servant of the living God. Listen here. He says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. It's time to arise right now in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the statement, and if you can't write it down, this is the statement I want you to have before you. When the dam burst, when the dams burst, you have got to decide whether to be in the way of the flood or riding the waves. When the dams burst, you have got to decide whether to be in the way of the flood or riding the waves. You all, Overseer and Pastor Sandra, we're going to be riding the wave. Don't be behind <laughs> We're going to be riding the waves, you all. Because God is about to send the waves right now of his blessing. So, oh, shut up, oh, God. Hallelujah. He's sending waves of his blessing. And you're going to see households turn around. You're going to see health turn around. You're going to see so many blessings at one time that you won't even believe it. And for those who are believing for the absolute miracle that you need before the end of this year, you start just saying, God, I thank you that the dams are bursting and I'm riding the way. I'm riding the waves. I'm riding the waves. Every time I'm riding the waves. I'm riding the waves. I'm riding the waves. I'm riding the waves. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand of praise. And we thank God for those that are on Facebook Live those that are on Zoom. We thank you for joining our broadcast today. 3D power. We're going to operate in this three-dimensional power and we're going to operate in the greatest authority there is. And we offer you that. If you don't know Christ, you can know him today. Just repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe I believe you died for my sins. I believe you died for the sins of the world. I believe God raised you, Jesus, from the dead on the third day. I ask you to forgive me of every sin I committed against you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life from this moment on throughout eternity. And I thank you, Lord, for 
for saving me. In Jesus' name. And if you would like to contribute to the ministry, you can cash up us at dollar sign pay how be. And that's dollar sign capital F A H O W B H A M. And we're thanking God for you being a part. Goodbye, and we will see you next week.